article. Uh, and I want to read you some of it. All right. Go ahead. And, and then I want to tell you what happened as a result of uh, uh, what, what happened as a result of the writing of this and not coming up with answers. All right. Go ahead. Um, when something powerful and awful takes up an existence in our lives without any apparent reason or logical explanation, we often go out in search of an answer. Generally speaking, when we apply our deductive reasoning to the facts that we gather on our quest for knowledge, we are successful in understanding what makes the new problem work and then to begin the task of fixing it. I have identified politically as a Democrat since high school without being overly active in politics. With the exceptions of serving as a precinct chairman, distributing flyers, or making phone calls, I have mostly been an average armchair party affiliate. I live a very normal median lifestyle and am modestly active in my community's efforts to be and remain a good place to live. I am in every way a law-abiding citizen, and most of the money I set aside for charity goes to police, veteran, or animal relief funds. So why do so many people hate me? It wasn't until I joined Facebook that I learned the true scope of a poisonous, vitriolic hate that runs deep in the veins of roughly half the nation for anyone who identifies as a Democrat. I was stunned to learn that people I have never met would gladly punch my face repeatedly for not throwing confetti in the air Every time President Trump or his administrative team comes up with yet another way to demonstrate that America is a ship without a helm. But I have said, before Facebook, there were clues. I was fired twice during Obama's term for being a Democrat. The persons who fired me were as unpleasant as their powers of social violence allowed them to be. Each of the two employers went to as much effort to harm me as means allowed them, going out of their way to inflict as much damage on my career as possible. FYI, if you work in Texas or Georgia, you can, you can be fired for being a Democrat, and you will not receive benefits. Once, during Obama's first campaign, I was attacked when I was riding my bicycle to the gym. There were two men in a pickup truck with a machete. The reason was an Obama, the president, campaign button pinned to my backpack. Throughout the attack, both men cursed me and threatened my life. Fortunately, I came to know seriously on, as they were drunk and pretty lousy fighters, even with them again. A second attack came just a month later when a prominent older businessman in my neighborhood ran my bicycle off the road with his Lincoln Navigator, nearly killing himself in the process. The man in his later 70s, I learned, suffered a heart attack as he was striking and kicking me. Although I myself was not seriously injured, the sheer hatred and the incoherent violence of his screams and shouting shocked me to the core. This was a man I had exchanged waves and pleasant small talk with from time to time over the last years. The police actually considered the attack as provoked by my visibly bored campaign material and they actually thought about charging me. Apparently, the most famous aspect of my behavior was that my route to the store took me past an elementary school where the eyes of small children might be corrupted by having been exposed to Obama propaganda. Oh, and there is the fact that I cannot vote earlier absentee as they have thrown my vote out once as I voted for a Democrat. After Facebook, if general life is walking in a contained, familiar environment, Facebook is like walking in, in a, a Facebook is like driving an interstate in a dual metro area during the worst hours of driving. My first attempts at Facebook were like playing the game Frogger. I was usually roadkill well before reaching the other side of the road. I finally got the hang of it. And filling my page with such beauty, humor, comfort recipes, and science as I could, and alas, it was too little too late. It was my past, you see. I had written many articles and posts and shared memes, all of which while eschewing Hillary had a democratic swing. I quickly learned that Facebook assigns people to certain pasturage, and nothing I posted was overlooked by, for a drive-by smear including pictures of my family, birthdays, weddings, and, well, you know. I gave up my Facebook page at the urging to make that the begging of my children. Apparently, my Democrat identity was harmful to their career.
Warriors also. So much for the First Amendment. Nothing I have been able to unearth has given me any understanding of the mindless, ravenous hatred toward Democrats. I have asked everyone I dare to ask about it, and the most frequent answer I get is, I don't know, I just hate them. None of these haters has any kind of coherent explanation for their hatred. They just they feel hatred for me. Finally, I caved in and asked my writing partner. I know. I should have asked him earlier, right? I get it. He's a Republican. So he should be able to answer that for me easily, right? But I didn't want to ask him. We had been on one enterprise or another for 50 years, and I didn't want to upset an equilibrium that continues. Turns out I should have asked him earlier. It's Obama, he said. What about Obama, I asked. It turns out that the Republicans want an unspecified amount of payback for having eight years of Obama as president. Now, that's where this ends right now, because I, I stopped. I realized that I painted myself into a corner, all right? And I needed to talk to somebody about what, about what all this meant. So I called this guy up in South Dakota I was talking about. And this is what he told me. And this is some interesting stuff. I want to take it one piece at a time. Because it really is interesting. The first thing he said was this. He said, the common people believe that Obama wanted to take the money out of working people's pockets and put it in the pockets of people who don't work. Your turn. I agree with that 100%. I personally don't have anything uh, for or against Obama. I think he was a neutral president, okay? He didn't do any good, didn't do any harm. Uh, he was, um, for want of a better word, it's a liberal's way of putting somebody in there that they thought would, would change the world, and it didn't change the world. And now Trump is a – you remember that political pendulum I told you about? Okay. Well, Obama was on the left side of the pendulum. Now it swung back, and I said this in an article oh, years ago, a couple of years ago. It's not going to stop in the middle. It's going to go all the way to the right, and then it's going to come back all the way to the left never stops in the middle, okay? Um, like I said, I personally don't have anything against Obama. I just, I think he was a neutral president. Uh, you know, well, we had to have a black man eventually for president, so there he was. I mean, that, that kind of thing, you know. He did his eight years, and now he's gone. Uh, Trump has made uh, a concerted effort in stamping out everything that the man did, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. Right, and that's not right. And like I told you today, um, um, even us conservatives, so this this political climate, even us conservatives are suffering from this certain political climate. That if you're a Democrat, I have to hate you, and if I'm a Republican, you have to hate me. Yeah, I mean, we, there's no more like we've discussed before. Nancy Pelosi meets with Donald Trump. And she says, look, I'll give you the money for your wall, but I need two more aqueducts for California to bring water into California. And he says, I don't think I, I, I would want to spend that kind of money, but will you give me the wall? And she says, yes, you'll get your wall, but I want the water. They shake hands, and they part, and the people in California have ice water, and Trump has his border. That's called cooperation. That's called compromise. We no longer do that. Uh, Congress is an aisle right down the middle of it for a reason. On one side are Democrats. On the other side are uh, Republicans. And in the middle, I guess, is Cortez somewhere in the aisle, you know, because she was the bartender. And she's real good at running up and down aisles. But uh, that, that's not the way it's supposed to be. Um, I met a lady yesterday, a woman named Nameless, okay, who has a very good Fortune 500 company, and she is a liberal. And she works with a conservative customer. But she cannot tell, um, I mean, uh, she is a, you know, she's working with a, uh, <clears throat> she can't let anybody know she's liberal. Okay? Because if she does, <clears throat> she'll lose her business. 
<clears throat> for no reason, for no reason. And this is the, the way the country has gone, and it's wrong. It's just wrong. I don't care about anybody's political views as long as they're not violent, okay? Uh, we should be able to meet, argue, cuss, and discuss anything in this country. That's what this country is all about, okay? That's what this country is all about. From Lincoln and, and Douglas screaming at each other in 1859, all the way up to Kennedy and Nixon uh, debating on TV for the uh, first time on TV in 1960. You know, this is what this country is about, and we've lost that. And I'm going to blame, I'm going to say something the conservatives aren't going to like. Trump has ratcheted this up. The other night when <clears throat> uh, he was talking about, well, we can't just, you know, we can't harm the soldiers on the border. Uh, to defend our border and everything, and somebody yells, just shoot them. Everybody laughed, and, and Trump winked. We don't need that. We don't need, especially that situation where I heard from Tijuana today, or Tijuana, the way they think down there, uh, that the Mexican people themselves are fed up for the caravans. Okay? Is that better down there in Tijuana? Yeah. And, 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 and we're sitting here hating on the Mexican people when they're just as mad as we are. I mean, uh, these people come in on them, they're eating all their tortillas, their children aren't safe because there's criminals in this bunch, all this. And the mayor of Tijuana just jumped up and said, no, we're not going to do this anymore, you know? So people have got to come together. And I sound like John Lennon talking here, but we really have to come together. I think Pelosi is a divisionist. I think a lot of people on Trump's team are divisionists. We've got to find people that meet in the middle and say, look, we are Americans. We can sit down and we can talk and we can work this out. We are Americans. Uh, if, 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 if we don't work it out, the Russians will. Where would we find that person? Actually, we don't need one person like that. We, we need, need no, no, you're right. We don't need one person like that. We need a goddamn Congress. Right. Do what they're supposed yeah. to do. They haven't done a, a damn thing in two years. Nothing on either side of the aisle. Uh, the Democrats are, are uh, impeach, impeach, collusion, collusion, and the Republicans are saying no collusion, no collusion. They haven't laid one yard. Forget the wall. Forget the wall. They haven't laid one yard of asphalt on the interstate. They haven't done anything, which is perfectly fine for these people that have never held a job. You know, that's perfectly fine. You know? Your thoughts? Well, let me follow. Let me follow the the, the trail that my guy, my cousin in in, in uh, Watertown gave me. All right. Um, let, let me follow that. Thing. Let me just keep following that. He says. He says. Look. He says. He says. Uh, people. It, it, he said. Uh, my family, which is all together about a hundred and fifty some odd people, all di- all dislike Obama because of the Affordable Care Act. And I said, well, tell me why that is. Because up until then, I had been thinking about the Affordable Care Act as I think a lot of Democrats thought about it, which is to say it was better than nothing, okay? But this is what he said. He said, look, the problem is, is that we had a lot of people in this country who couldn't afford health care at all. So what happened is we could have given all those people Medicare. He said it would have been an easy thing. It would not have been a hard thing to do at all. All that would have had, all, all that needed to happen was that Congress and the Senate and the President, all three, needed to do what was right for the country instead of what was right for their, for their constituency, which appears to be the insurance companies. And um, he said, they said, because their constituents are really the insurance company and not the people of this country, what happened is, is that President Obama brought us a program that paid for health care for very poor people out of the pockets of the middle class. And it made the middle class poor. What he said was this. He said, at the time when, when Obama came to office, we had 44 million people who were the poorest Americans who had no health care at all. So, in order to ameliorate that, instead of giving those people Medicare, which would have which would have been eventually paid for by wealthy people, he 
he gave them the Affordable Care Act, which took the money from middle class and lower middle class people and, 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 and put it into the pockets of the poor and uh, for insurance, pay for insurance for the poor. Well, you know, you gave me those statistics the other day, and the the uh, Obamacare plan greatly benefited those people and didn't benefit the middle class that much, okay? But now, that having been said, this is where we come to, to compromise, okay? Uh, the middle and upper class generally would take care of their own health care, right? When, when I was upper class and had money to burn, we had the... Scott and White protection plan at $1,500 a month that did bother us a bit, all right? Pam got a triple bypass. Uh, I got my nose stitched and all that kind of stuff. But poor people, poor people needed Obamacare because they can't afford it, that kind of thing, all right? right. And so you say, well, look, all these poor people uh, got all this stuff in the middle class. The middle class and upper class didn't need it. I didn't need it. And I'm speaking, uh, I'm speaking from experience. I'm not speaking from some study I read or anything. I was glad to pay $1,500 a month. I could go to Scott and White Hospital any time I want. If I needed my toenails trimmed, they had a nurse trim them for me, and I wanted to buy that, okay? But when you get somebody on food stamps, HUD housing, all this kind of stuff, they can't afford it. They can't afford it. Right. So you, uh, and we do, we are our brother's keeper. See, that's what the Republicans don't realize. It's not socialism. It's not socialism. It is, there are some people who will never run the company. There are some people who will sweep the floors. All men are created equal. But about five minutes after they're created, they start going on different paths, you know. And, and some of them drive trucks. Some of them ride in trucks. And that's just the way the real world works. That's what the millennials don't understand. They're all, what did Jesus say? The poor you will always have with you. Your thoughts? Well, I, 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 think that, I, I think that the fact that we had people who were dying on the hospital steps, who were, we, we had all those, uh, uh, we had all those immigrant women who were going to, uh, Hospitals in Texas and, and California and having babies uh, and, and not paying for it, not paying a goddamn thing for it, was was, was putting a strain on the healthcare system. I, I, I think it was really illegal immigrants and just very poor people. We had a, a, a healthcare system that was breaking under the strain. Something had to be done to put more insured people into the pool. Now, Hillary. In her infinite wisdom, as just a single senator, as a, just as a single senator, managed to somehow or other take Medicare off the table, Medicare for all. Uh, I don't understand how she was able to do it, but I don't understand how she's managed to escape hanging or, or, or going to jail for the rest of her life with her. So, uh, so, so, so you've got a situation where, where, where you, you need more insured people. We had a system available to do that. That was denied to us. So what happened is, is that Obama used what Mitt Romney had cooked up in, in Massachusetts, which was a system whereby the middle class paid for the babies that were being had by uh, 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 people who migrated here illegally, whatever we call them nowadays, and, uh, and, and, and the very poor. And, and not only that, but Medicaid wasn't working anymore. Now, I, I can't tell you the number of hospitals, doctors, and medical facilities that said we don't pay Medicaid. Remember that? Remember when you, remember when you had, if you had Medicaid, it didn't really matter because they were, they were going to take it. So uh, this is what my friend Mark was telling me. That, you know, he, said, he said people hate Obama because before Obama, they, they were they were doing well enough that they could afford to live without worrying whether or not they might go absolutely broke this month or the next. But back then, you know, if they got a job, it was going to have insurance that they could afford because it was going to be significant. It was not going to be just catastrophic health care only. And um, he said that's that's why he said they don't they don't hate them all because he's black. You know, and this, this is a guy who's got Confederate flags posted everywhere that he can post one. But, but, but he's not a racist. And, 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 and I'm beginning to believe him. 
was beginning to believe that it wasn't that this is an unspecified amount of payback for having a black man as president, but an unspecified amount of of, 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 of payback because A, the guy was more of a friend to people who come from south of our border than to America. I'd say that was the first reason right there. The guy was, uh, he, he wasn't our president. He was the president of Mexicans and people from south of the border who came here illegally. That's whose president he was, apparently. Because DACA and the Affordable Care Act, which essentially ensured illegal immigrants, was his, was his whole presidency. You, you just, you, Ted, you just nailed it right there. You just nailed it right there. And Trump, well, my, my, my friend nailed it. Wasn't well, me. Trump has honed in on make America great again, okay? America first, that kind of stuff. And and, and and I hate to say that. Well, I don't hate to say it. I'm a Republican. I like to say it. I'm going to tell you right now. That is going to drive home in 2020. All these Democrats saying, oh, my God, you're, he's going out. We're going to do it. No. I, I'm going to predict right now. It's going to be a landslide. It's going to be a landslide. It's going to be a reinforcement and a mandate for Donald J. Trump. And it's going to make everybody on the, on the other side mad as hell, but there's nothing they can do. And he can say anything you want about his air, uh, his loose uh, control of facts, anything you want. But America is tired. Tired. And we're really tired of Europe. We're, and people are, we're really tired of Europe. You know, they sit over there looking down their long noses at us and everything. We left them because they were screwed up in the 1400s. They were screwed up. And they're still screwed up. Okay? We had to go over there in 1941 and 1917 and bail their butts out. Okay? Because they got completely out of control because they can't cooperate with each other. And with Brexit right now, they're proving it again. They can't get together for a sandwich. Okay? That's why Hitler was so successful. Hitler, and I'm, 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 don't take this the wrong way, but Hitler had a pretty good idea. If you had one Europe, you know, under one government, it might work better than uh, 20 of all the states in the Union here, in the United States, had a different language. Totally different people. I mean, absolutely. When you drove from Colorado to Utah, and in Colorado they spoke Swahili, and in uh, Utah they spoke Ubangi, okay? That's what Europe is like, and that's what we can't stand. And you're right. Obama, was he was the president of Mexico. And, I, and like I said, I thought he's just a neutral president. He's just a neutral. He didn't do a damn thing except well, talk, he talked slick. He talked real slick. Well, let me tell you who else, let me tell you who else he really benefited when he did this. He benefited Big Pharma when he did this because he because using the Affordable Care Act, he made, he made uh, all practically all medications out there uh, uh, government sanctioned medications. So that meant whatever the, the, the you know don't, let's not forget that we have a we have a law in this country and that is that Medicare nor any other government payer may negotiate with the pharmaceutical companies over the price of the pharmaceutical. So, so this was a big favor to Big Pharma. When, it, when, when, when he opened up the doors and said, okay, we're, gonna, we're going to allow for the, you know, the government to pay for medications for people who come here illegally into this country, what he meant was is we're going to allow for those medications to be paid for by the middle class and we're going to pay full price for them. So he, he guaranteed that 44 billion new people would be added to Big Pharma's rules. And the second uh, group of people he helped a great deal was, was the one percent, this vaunted, you know, unicorn-like one percent. Who are out there? And, 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 and because they didn't have to pay for a dime of this, since, since this was coming out of people's taxes, uh, uh, so, you know, so it, it was only coming out of the taxes of people. Who were already uh, 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 who, who, who were already on this street? This, about a third of the people who paid for this didn't have any insurance at all. So at the end of the year, they get a penalty from the IRS, and, it's, and that penalty goes to pay the, the insurance pre- 
thing is, on uh, whoever it is, if they come up here from the cell. You see, that's that's a, uh, go right back to America first. We've got we have got to take care of our, our country is in disarray. We have got to take care of our country first, and then help the world. I heard you know me. I personally think we should pull every troop out of the Middle East, every single one of them, and and just tell them, y'all handle it. Y'all handle it because we're tired. Y'all been fighting for four thousand years trying to decide which one of uh, Abraham's kid was a bastard. And we're, we're tired of it. It's time to move on. It's time to I move think, on. I think it's over a lot more. I agree. I, no, know, that's, where it right, that, that's where it starts. That's where it starts. The, the followers of Muhammad go back to the one kid, and the Jews go back to the other. And, and I know they have political differences, and uh, land ownership differences and all that stuff, but it all goes back to that one stupid argument. Yeah, I what you're talking I about is 3,500 years, a 3,500-year-long unbroken string of murders. Okay, so for 3,500 years, for 3,500 unbroken years, there's just serial strings of murders that take place over that issue. And it's been taking place over that issue for 3,500 years. Exactly. 3,500 years. And, 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 and so it's fresh in your mind when, you're, when your cousin just got killed at his wedding, you know, uh, by a drone that was meant to kill some bad guy in a different country or uh, the next to stay over. That, should, that, 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 that stuff stays in your head. Yeah, but, you know, uh, yeah, I, I listen to all the little little stories over, oh my God, look how bad we've been treated and everything. Okay, listen, bitches. You didn't land at Plymouth Rock and claw your way to Salt Lake City. You didn't do that. And because, number one, you bitches couldn't do that. You don't, you, can, you don't have the fortitude to do that. Okay? When the Mormons got to Salt Lake City, all they wanted was to be left alone. Period. They didn't attack the United States. Yeah, the army was right on their butts, so. Yeah, yeah, but still, you know, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, oh, yeah. they took our land. They took our land. Uh, you don't know what it's like to lose your entire country and your land and everything. Tell that to the Sherkawa, bitches. Tell yeah, that to them. That's absolutely true. Yeah. That's true. The, the Comanches. Tell that to the, the Navajo. You know, they, they weren't hurting anybody. And we made a systematic genocide on those people. We really did that, okay? But what, what did the Indians do? Well, they, they took their lick, and they're, and they're coming back, and they started casinos, and they, uh, you and I have met Navajos. We've gone through their reservations and everything. Uh, they're not, they're not, they're, there's no uh, Navajo terrorists. You know, they're not, they're not, I watched one with, uh, I watched a video today with Russell Means before he died talking about Mother Earth. Saying we're all we're all related, we're all brothers, and the earth is a, is alive, and we need to realize that. We need to work with that. Okay, that was the, the Native American attitude. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, this stuff in, in the Middle East, uh, this religious fervor they got going on there. Number one, neither side can prove their case. Neither side. Uh, my invisible guy in the sky can beat up your invisible guy in the sky. Uh, Moses parted the Red Sea with a walking stick. Oh, well, Mohammed flew to uh, uh, heaven on the unicorn and everything. You're just a bunch of dumbasses, okay? You're, I mean, I'm going to say that Jews, Muslims, both of you, you're just a bunch of dumbasses, okay? Because all you are and it's all you're ever going to be, and it, America will wise up, sober up, and look at this, get on, and say, no more money. Notice I didn't say that. No more money. you got to buy your own bullets. Fight each other your own way and go on your own. We're not going into World War III with Russia and China over you. And we'll buy oil for whoever the winner is. Did, did, did you, did, have you seen what's going on in Libya again? Oh, God. I, what? what is, is Libya still there? Yeah. Libya is not just still there, but Libya is at war again. With it's what? It, with their damn self? With itself. With their damn self. With their damn self. Oh, it, it, yeah. oh, Jesus Christ. Jesus. You know, oh, man, I'm not going to say it. I am 
I'm not going to make this a hate speech. I'm really not. But man, you know, sometimes a good nuclear bomb would really come in freaking handy. You know what I mean? Well, I, you know, I, I think the way that that, that uh, I, I still think that that business in, in Libya was a hit on Libya by, by the IMF, and I think Hillary Clinton just carried it out. I think Hillary Clinton was a hit man, and the IMF, were, you know, the International Monetary Fund, and the World Bank just paid for the hit. And uh, we went in there, and we, we took out their leadership. And now that there's no leadership, what, what you've got is corporations in there battling it out with each other uh, to, you know, to see who's the way to be the winner. And, you know, Tripoli has gotten to be a place where you can't live anymore. You can't live in Tripoli. It's the most dangerous place on the planet, actually. Ralph told me today, or Roger, I'm sorry, Roger, uh, he's done a documentary that says the butcher shop, by the way, is going to run Thursday uh, on the influence of corporations on world affairs and how they uh, instead of governments or supposedly the people that, that uh, support the governments are running world events, it's now uh, AT&T, Bear, uh, Microsoft. You know, yeah, and they're, and they're having private wars with each other in places like the Democratic Republic of the Congo, uh, Libya, uh, uh, Syria. They're, these are private wars that are being held between corporations. Exactly, and that's exactly what it is. That's all it is. It's just, um, it's unbelievable what it is. And, it is. And, it's just, and like like Roger said when we did the TV show the other day, Roger said, now this sounds like the tinfoil hat stuff. No, it's not tinfoil hat stuff. I'm not a tinfoil hat person. I'm not a tinfoil hat person. But I know any time a nitwit like Mark Zuckerberg can have any influence over the country, we got a problem, boys. We got a problem. You know, when, when somebody like that is control because he's controlling Facebook. Facebook. Think about that. You know, people worry about say what's been said on Facebook. Am I in Facebook jail? Am I this? Am I that? And the Russians. Let me tell you how little they think about us. How, how little they think about us. How do we mess up the American elections? Oh, we'll put a bunch of Facebook memes. They, they, that's all they look at when they when they vote. Huh. This is like when the AIDS epidemic came out. And they and uh, there was a joke going around saying that the Russians wanted to destroy American society, okay? And so they said, well, what can we do? Well, let's give them a virus that affects them when they uh, use illegal drugs or have anal sex. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll, that'll kill America right there. And it damn near did. <laughs> okay, it damn near did. That's how far we've sunk. Now, we don't know. Men think they're women. Women think they're men. And by God, you better not say nothing about it. You better not say, that's hate speech. That's hate speech. If you say the Q word, you know, and everything. I actually got censored last week, and I agreed with the censorship because I wanted the, the reach in the newspapers because I said the Q word. You can't say the Q word anymore because they're not the Q word anymore. They're, um, what the hell do they call themselves now? Uh, well, there's, so, there's 37 different designations, okay? I have pulled... Are you talking, are you talking about queer? Uh, yeah, I am talking about queer. Yeah, queer is an actual designation that is, uh, that, that is, that is accepted by the LBG. Well, yeah, no, no, you don't understand that. Where are those, where are those letters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you don't understand. Okay, this is the political correct uh, vocabulary. They can say queer, but we can't say queer. You understand? I can't say do, queer. Do, no, do you understand, my nigga? Well, I, I can say queer if I want to say queer. You just yeah, did. You, you just did. You did. Yeah. did. That's right. You did. Yeah. That's true. And, and, and I don't necessarily, I don't, you know, you, you can't tell me when I say it in, like the way, the, way, the way we're discussing this right now, we're, we're, we're not denigrating people who de designate themselves as queer. We're not. We're just using the same word that they use to well, describe themselves. I have said I mean, I've said a hundred times, if you're in Austin, Texas, and you go into a restaurant, and I do this all the time, you find the gay right waiter. You find him. You, you know him. You know him. I mean, he, he's yeah, you're looking for one. Yeah, because he's the one that's going to make sure the drinks get to the table on time. 
if the stakes aren't done right, he's going to go back and jump all over the ship. And he won't forget anything. He is the one that does everything right. You want to get your hair cut? Hey, I, I went to one the other day, got my hair cut and everything. Certain right. people do certain things. Sonny, our friend Sonny was, was queer as a $3 bill. Who did I bring over here to put the house together? More queer than a $3 bill. More queer. Who did I bring over here to put the house together? Sonny could mount a cabinet, paint a cabinet, mop a floor with the best of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and he had a life partner for 42 years who died on him. When his partner died, all of us straight, redneck, racist Texans took him on the race. Okay, until he died. Because he didn't have nobody. We didn't we didn't punish Sonny for being gay. We didn't do that. He, he, every weekend he came to a party. Where there were a lot of people, and none of the people there but him were queer. He was the only queer who came. He was the only so one. He had, he had plenty of company. He had, he had roommates that weren't queer. He had, the, the guy had plenty of friends. He did, and, he did not laugh for nothing. We even laughed when, when Summer did that uh, that dance, you know? And I was, yeah. amazed, I was amazed. She's a good dancer. And she did, gave, Sonny, gave Sonny a lap dance. I, and I looked at him. She got up and he was all red in the face. And I said, "I guess you ain't that gay after all, huh?" <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, um, I want to I want to come back to this Obama thing and, and, and the hatred because because Mark said something else that never even occurred to me, and, what, and once he said it, it blew his sight. I can't get it out of my head. Right. And that is that now what's happened is is that the Mueller report has replaced Obamacare as the, the as the central uh, lightning rod of, of 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 hatred for for uh for, for 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 conservatives. Now conservatives keep striking the Mueller report the same way they were striking the Affordable Care Act. Well, here, here's here's the deal on the Mueller report. It's real simple. This is where I'm good at this. Okay. Um, I respect Mr. Mueller. He went two years, everybody bitched and pissed and moaned and all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. But I can't say that that man didn't turn over every leaf to find out whatever he could. Okay? He came out, and he didn't say per se, I didn't find anything wrong. He said, I can't possibly a thing I found because there's really not that much there. We should have dropped it. We should have at that point. Well, that didn't work. Uh, apparently that that that's the way it is. That's the way it is. Okay, uh, but nobody. See the Democrats, and I'm gonna push the Democrats a little bit now. Okay, I've been busting my own people. I'm gonna push them. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna impeach. Uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna bring Don Jr. in here, and we're gonna ask him if he put a comma behind this word or in front of that word. We're gonna give it up. Please give it up. It didn't work. It didn't work. If you put the, if you put that Don Jr. You to testify. It, 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 is, it is a Republican who did this, and I guarantee you it's so that the Republicans that can, can, can use that as a sharp point of the spear to open up their investigation into the Democrats. Well, see, and that's why, you know what's coming? I'm telling you what's coming. I'm telling you what's coming. Is, remember, I always told you, that law dog, you got that law dog on the leash that's all real good, you know? One day that leash goes limp. Well, uh, it's about to go limp. It's about to go limp, and and, and the law is going to turn around, and he's going to go back to the owner, and then the Democrats are going to have to explain Hillary and Benghazi and the 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 servers and this and that and this over here and then what another everything all that kind of stuff. The cleanest Democrat that I know is Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders never got laid, as far as I can tell. Yeah, apparently. But apparently is one of those words, I tell you. Yeah. But you have, apparently, I mean, it's really hard to tell because there's so much. Like Bernie Sanders has this cloud around him that I can't penetrate with my eyeballs. He, 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 the, the, he, he's, he wants to do so much that is so complicated that I feel like the guy isn't going to be able to get anything. No, he's got a quagmire. He's got a quagmire. He's got, I like something that I like, I like. I like Medicare for all. I just, they're like, oh, God, dude, oh, oh, Medicare for all, y'all. All right, all right, listen. Number one, number one, I think half the country's on Medicare anyway. So all we're going to do is, is offer, not force, offer Medicare to 
the other half. Now, young, young people ain't going to give up $27 a month for that crap, okay? And if they do, a person in their 20s is not going to get cancer, okay, or or Alzheimer's or all that other crap. So you're not going to spend any money there anyway. you already got the software set up. You've already got the, the means set up. And we need to uh, – let's, oh, let's attack uh, Social Security. Oh, that damn Social Security. Well, my God, everybody, we balance. We didn't have that. You got our money, fool. You got our money. Our money. But, now, but right now, you and I are talking about um, an, an actual real life issue that ought, that ought to and does matter to every American family. The thing of it is, is that all we seem to be able to talk about is the Affordable Care Act and the Mueller report. Why can't well, we talk about something out of the way? Why can't yeah. we talk about something else? Yeah, that's about, because, here's the deal. In my life, okay, in my life, if I'm not dying of a heart attack like right now, or if I don't have cancer of a dick like right now, I'm not going to them, Doc. They cost cost too much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go buy a half pint of whiskey and drink that. That's the medicine I'm going to take because nobody can afford medicine anymore. Period. No, it's too expensive. Yeah, period. Me and you have been going through hell down here in Texas, folks. You people out there in Radio Land don't know this, but Texas in April and May, uh, it's a shits, man. <laughs> and, 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 since, and since it seems to be so handy to be able to make methamphetamine out of the same stuff that clears your sinuses up, mm-hmm. they seem fit to restrict access to and raise the price of right. the medication that, that will solve that problem for us. Yeah, see, that's the whole thing. Um, instead of going to a doctor, when I have, uh, like what we had this week, me and you both, that does, well, I, I call it Texas disease, when the, when the weather blows through before it gets hot, and instead of going to a doctor and getting a prescription and, and taking it, we trot, trot our happy bus down to HEB, and we buy Claritin D of what we can get, and then we go over the specs, and we buy a fifth of whiskey to wash it down with, okay, because we can't afford medicine anymore, not real medicine. Uh, we're better off with, with voodoo women. We're better off with voodoo women. We don't even know a lot of times when we take what you just called the real medicine, mm-hmm. if that stuff is doing us any good or even maybe doing us some harm. Well, basically, no, it's not. Give me a second, let me call you out. Now, you grow up in this, I'm going to let your ass go. Go. There's the two new dogs are digging under my dang fence, tearing my fence up. Why well, Cinefrel is a good example of this. Yeah. And, you know, and, and um, I'm 67 years old. I got a doctor. I have a heart doctor who's telling me, but you could die any minute. <laughs> I, can, I can't remember a time in my life when I might have died any minute. I can't remember a time when, it, when, I, when I wasn't under that damn ecclesiastical sword. I, I, I mean, I, I, I always knew that death was around the next corner, didn't you? Yeah, right after that, right after Hilda hit me in that damn car. You remember when that, you remember when that Vietnamese woman almost killed me with a shovel when I was pulling her husband off of her? He was killing her. He, he had a claw hammer. He was killing her. I pulled her husband off, and it took some subduing. I know you were there. I know James was there. I can't remember who all was there. And she, she, she went and got a shovel out of the shed and came back and did a number on me. I don't remember three days of my life. She gave me a hell of a concussion, that woman. So, I mean, you know, I mean, it, it, uh, uh, people were always getting shot or stabbed or run over or killed their own car crash. Oh, man. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, I mean, uh, see, life is a gamble. People, are, the millennials don't understand that. Life is a gamble. It is always a gamble. Uh, you never know what's going to happen from one moment to the next. Uh, you remember I told you when I heard a ding on my cell phone and I glanced down at it? See, I see Peter. I glanced down, and in the, the flash of a moment, I was eight feet into the intersection, and all it took was one garbage truck, and you would have been having to write all the articles for the literature shop from now on. Yeah, that's right. That's you right. See, you, 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 you guys would be reading this stuff by Brother Theo. Yeah. And hey. you know, and, I, and, and, and I mean, I'll tell you what. I, 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 at first, I wasn't even picking the phone up, and now I got a new room. When I go to the store, I don't even take the phone. It's like, what happened?
happens if something terrible happens? What if somebody dies? Well, they'll still be dead when I get home. <laughs> and I'll be just, I'll be just, I'll be just as fucked up, but they'll still be dead. And I said, Oh God damn, they died five minutes ago. I wish Jesus had been there. <laughs> when when Big Hodger told me I had atrial fibrillation, I, I stuck out my hand and I said, "Thank you, God." And he and he, and he couldn't understand it. You know, he, he said, "What? What do you What do you mean, thank you?" I said, "Thank you. That's the best diagnosis I can think of." And he said, "Why?" And I said, "Well, remember Billy Hayes?" And he said, "Yeah, I was about to tell you that story." And I said, "So from the time that that blood clot hit his mitral valve." until the time that his body hit the floor. How long was that? And he said, I don't know, maybe five seconds. And I said, it, it, and he was dead when he hit, right? That's right. I said, and, that, and, and you would rather skip that line right there and get in line where you're going to go to a nursing home and spend maybe, you know, weeks or months or years in the hospital and nursing home before you die. Wouldn't you just rather be in the middle of doing a commercial and having a good time, just having had a great hamburger and a couple of beers, and then you're dead in five seconds. I, I'd much rather have that. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, when you get our age, and people don't understand this, uh, young people, I didn't when I was young. Every night when you go to bed, when you open your eyes in the morning, it really is a new day. Because it's not, it's just like the good books say, you're not guaranteed. You ain't guaranteed at all. Uh, uh, and, and, and it happens to young people. So what they don't understand, it happens to young people, too. I've seen young, beautiful girls drop dead for the same the reason. Is, just, the news is full of them right now. Yeah, just drop dead, you know, because you're not guaranteed anything. That's why you got to make every day count. You've got to do right by everybody. And that's what the Congress needs to understand is that, look, do your job, Nancy. Nancy ain't never going to die, man. She ain't never going to die. She keeps drips. She's spitting her teeth out every time she turns around, you know. You know, it's the most unnatural thing to see a woman that age have no gray hair. You know I, mean? I mean, really. But I'm not going to make fun of her hair like they do Trump or anything. I'm saying, you know, come on, man. Come on. You know, I mean, Jesus Christ, you know. Well, anyway, uh, I am going to edit this thing. And I've got, I've got to take a look at this fence out here to see what it freaking dog did. He got it. The other two dogs said, hey, man, we ain't going nowhere, dude. You know, we're here, man. You know, but that one got out. Yeah. The neighbor lady came over and talked to me. I mean, she, what did she say? Your dog got out. That's obviously there he is. <laughs> obviously. Did, is my gate no. open? No. Nope. I don't know how she got out. If she's digging under the fence, I, I'm going to have to tell Erica, I can't have that. That is absence. Porter hangs out on the back porch and dances and eats with me, and, and I'll, I can't have holes under my damn brand new fence. No, no, I'm just saying. No, uh, 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 <laughs> that's the one Porter threw down with and held by the ear. Right, held by the ear. That's the one. Yeah, she, she left. <laughs> well, yeah. There's not good reason for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, 
out of the country. That's why we have a corps of engineers. Right. Oh, exactly. Every damn, let me tell you people something. Y'all don't know this out there. I'm going to tell you something new. Every dam you've ever seen was built by the Army Corps of Engineers and is still run by the Army Corps of Engineers, okay? That's right. But they're the ones that they built Belton Lake, they built Hoover Dam. And if you got a levy keeping the crawdads out of New Orleans, the Army Corps of Engineers built it, okay? That's the way it works in the real world. The Army is, is in charge of securing the border. <laughs> and that's all Trump did. He didn't make a big deal out of it. He told the Army, he told the Pentagon, go secure the border. They said, yes, sir. That's the end of it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. If they have to do it with, with uh, uh, concertina wire, they have to do it with machine guns, they don't matter. That's what they do. That's what they do. And the Mexicans are on our side. See, that the thing that's bad. They're on our side. They don't want them Hondurans up there no more than we do. You know, and what will they do if they break into the country? They'll sell a few Big Macs, you know. Uh, when you've got a country that's living on tortillas and beans, and they well, we're doing good. We're doing good. We're doing good. Everything's okay. Everything. Uh, well, well, we ain't got no tortillas left. No, we have to give it all to the Hondurans. Well, they're mad. They're mad. And they need to be mad. The Mexican people are not bad people. And that's something else as a Texan I can say. They're not bad people. They're not Iran. They're not the enemy. You know, they're they're good people. And they're, they're just as mad as we are. We should support Mexico in every way we can. Through the 
yard. <laughs> That's you know. So, it, it is. It, 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 are you still, have you still got pools of water in here? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's a cattle tank out in the back. Did it, did it rain there last night, by the way? Bad. 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 It was thundering this afternoon when I was talking to you. It was thundering this afternoon. I know it. It was it's thundering. It's the week and I just was talking about that. But I'm glad. I'm glad they cut that. The, that was only out four days of thunderstorms in the forecast well, instead of like you. The good so, news yeah. is, is I have whiskey. Yeah, <laughs> that's always good news. I that's, can't think of a time when that's not good news. I just got to get one of these girl things hanging around here, and I'll be all right. Brother, I tell you, uh, I wish you luck in that, in that area. <laughs> you know, we're in, age, we're in an age right now where women are, a woman who, who, who has enough uh, trust left in her. To love somebody, it's hard to find it. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I just well, well they're so cynical. I was looking. Uh, I was. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, don't get me wrong. I'm not blaming. I'm just saying. I, I was looking around the green for a young lady who was loyal, a virgin, uh, decent, truthful, uh, did everything she was told, and 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 loved me for who I was and everything. However, there are laws against marrying eight-year-olds, okay? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I, I mean, I, I, I heard that. I think somewhere. I can't remember where. Um, oh, man. <clears throat> uh, maybe it was that girl you like to listen to on YouTube. Um, the one who makes jokes about her boyfriend getting out of prison. Um, <laughs> that 12-year-old? Yeah, I love, I love, I am in love with her. I never meet, need to meet that kid. I'm in love with her. She's so smart. So, David, is that you? When did they let you out? <laughs> she is funny. I, I, the, 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 the one you sent me of her was funny. She, yeah, uh, she's something else. She, she, yeah, she's, she's got a lot of brass. Yeah, she does. Um, she does. And she's from Arlington. Arlington, Texas. You don't you don't get that kind of smart from uh, Delaware. <laughs> Where did she go? Arlington, Texas, Texas. Yeah, the, the city that can't decide if it's Fort Worth or Dallas. <laughs> right. Um, well, we have got to cut this off because I've got two of the hour right. here, and uh, and it's, it's going to take me. And that's the cutoff. All right. Well, I got writing to do, so I'll talk to you later. All right. Later, Dave.